Can you guys hear me? So um, if you can hear me, I will redo this tomorrow. But I wanted to just talk about that drug before we break today. So that drug is called Comstat Mesylate. The drug is called Comstat Mesylate. Here is the name, Mesylate. So Comstat Mesylate. Some people write it as Mesylate as well. This drug has been used in Japan for pancreatitis, pancreatitis for since 1985. And they give 600 milligram of this drug into three divided doses on daily basis, I believe for a week or so. And this is also used for post-operative, post-operative surgical post-operative esophagitis, esophagitis, you know, the inflammation of the esophagus. And over there, for them, it is given in 100 milligram, three divided doses. That means, uh, sorry, 300 milligram, three divided doses per day. So that means 100 milligram morning, 100 milligram in the lunchtime, and 100 milligram in the evening. That is the drug dose they have been using and that dose blocks the TMPR SS2. And if we can use the same drug to block the TMPR SS2, we can block the viral entry as well. And here are a couple of studies. Can you can you guys hear me? Looks like it's today's really bad network. So here is com camostat. Here is a study that shows in vitro. Can you hear me? So this study shows in vitro. In vitro means it's not in the body. It's not given to a patient, this drug. It shows that they took epithelial cells from our lungs, put them in a dish, petri dish, and then put the drug in there and coronavirus in there. And they found out that the drug blocked TMPRSS2 protein that caused the coronavirus spike protein not to be able to attach with AS AS2 and work correctly. And that blocked the virus from entering the cell. So that is how this drug worked. I am so sorry for the uh, network and the audio issues. I will redo the same discussion tomorrow because I want to make sure that this set that we are making that can help us understand what kind of therapies can be needed. We will have a clean set built. So does this make sense? So here is a study that says preventing spread of SARS-CoV-2 in humans by using comostat mesylate. And what it does is that it blocks TMPRSS2. So we'll talk about this once again tomorrow. I'll share the same studies tomorrow. I will actually uh, as well going on right now in Denmark. So if you don't mind, I'm going to delete today's videos because they are they do not have a good uh, quality. So um, I would delete them and then redo them tomorrow. My apologies for this uh, bad situation with the with the talk today. So anyways, the drug is Comstat Comostat mesylate it's a japanese word and i find it difficult to say it but it can block the tmprss2 now what is the other function of tmprss2 tmprss2 can be working with the it is a protease it cuts proteins so it can work with many other proteins in our body but they have found out in japan that it is very useful against acute pancreatitis and against post-operative esophagitis. They've been using it since 1985. It has been pretty safe. About 100,000 people a year take this drug in Japan. And the drug uh, dosage there that they've seen, in that dose, I think they have only one patient who developed some eosinophilia in 2016 because of allergy to drug. So that's only once. 
So this is a great drug. I wanted to share this once again. We'll do this discussion tomorrow. I want to have a very clean set for you guys, but I am very sorry for the issue today. My apologies. So again, tomorrow at 6 p.m. And you know what? The uh, ivermectin uh, video that you, YouTube had taken down, it, I never could get it and it was destroyed. I didn't have another copy either. So I will redo the ivermectin as well. Absolutely. So William is saying that why bother looking in food when you can buy a purified drug? They, there are both ways to look at it. Uh, so a very fascinating thing that for some, um, for some components, for example, beta carotene, when beta carotene is present within the foods and vegetables, fruits and vegetables, and we take it, it helps against cancer. But when they derived the beta carotene and then gave it to us, it actually increased the lung cancer. So there may be more things within the food that may be complementary or balancing for these products. So of course we have the purified uh, drugs as well. The, the way to work with the purified drug is to take the drug out and then do trials, just like now they're doing trials. But there are products that can, that can be used within the foods and fruits as well. So we'll talk about them tomorrow. Very sorry for the bad experience today. And I will, um, I, so Chantal, you're correct that I do have a copy on Facebook, but the problem with the Facebook is that the video size is this big, 320 by something 128 or 2, 280. So it's such a small video size that Facebook allows you to download that you cannot put that anywhere um, useful. So I don't, don't know why Facebook does it. <laughs> Absolutely. So that doctor friend of mine, uh, her name is uh, Rola. So Rola is my assistant and she is a cool bean as well. So if you see, she's wearing a cool bean badge too. So we'll have Rola talk with you tomorrow as well. So very good. I'm very sorry that this happened. Is my voice okay now? I'm trying to see if it is the computer or was it the network issue at that time, which is subsided now. So Andrew is saying, uh, wishing you well from Canada and thank you for your videos and live broadcast the way in which you delineate. Excellent. Thank you very much. I'm very happy. So it looks like the voice has become okay. So maybe it was the network and not the um, computer itself. Should we actually then change our time one hour late? Maybe this is the time when people were still working and they were still... I don't know. I'm just trying to figure it out. Yes. Yeah, so uh, Mayan, uh, I would do that. And one last thing before you go. So please like, subscribe and share my videos. But I wanted to share this as well. I shared that in the beginning of the previous video today that somebody left a comment for me on the YouTube. So there are people who leave bad comments. Some people are just angry and they so somebody wanted to call me a sheep today. And they, they, it was such a sick burn. It was so cute. They said, uh, sheep count you when they go to sleep. So meaning when a sheep is, so it was so cute. I thought that when a sheep is going to go to sleep, they're going to say, I want to count sheep. So instead of counting sheep, they would count Mobin. So that was a sick burn. Yeah, so, uh, so I think so, Jim, you're correct. So I'm, I'm just speaking freely at this time because I would delete these videos and redo them tomorrow. And I would talk about it as well, the Lirona Lim, Liron Limab. I'll talk about it. We all have, please ask away. So if you have any questions at this time, this is a video, we, I'm gonna delete it. Ask away, ask questions. Welcome. So a new viewer and subscriber, welcome very, very much. Sankofa 314, how did you find us? Good morning to you as well. Today's video will be redone after the lecture. I will delete this video, so please don't look for it. And I would redo it tomorrow, hopefully with a better quality. <laughs> Abdul says, why would people really abuse you? Like they have got, got internal battles to fight, <laughs> leave them. So the thing is this. 
I think that it is never possible that any one person can be liked or their message can be liked by everyone. So we all think differently. We all have different point of views. And so it is not necessary that my point of view is liked by everyone. Although I tried that I do not offer opinions and I do medical discussions. But unfortunately, even medical concepts have become politicized at this time. So sometimes people feel that they hear a spe specific title or a concept. They think that a special uh, that I have a specific lineage uh, or lean leaning towards, let's say, Democrats or Republicans or big pharma or small pharma. And so they then attack me as a representative of what they think I am, which is not the case. I'm a medical doctor who takes up medical concepts. Do I do a lot of study every day to make sure that I understand the concepts and then bring them to you. The benefit of this, I think, uh, again, as I said before, my viewership is not very big, maybe 10,000 views in a day compared to many people who have hundreds and thousands of views per day. But imagine if 10,000 people had to spend four or five hours to do the same research that I did. So I did that one research for all of you, the 10,000 people, and I, I saved, let's say, 40 or 50,000 hours. So that is the benefit I offer. Wow. So William says, I accidentally exploded a syndromethylene blue a few months ago. Uh, Tylee, you, you are the most reliable source of many of us have. And that, that is a point. I'm not a sheeple. I'm not a um, big pharma shell or small pharma shell. Uh, my, or I'm, a, I'm not... In my, in my teaching or discussions, I'm not Democrat or Republican or independent. All I do is that I look up the concepts and I bring them to you so that you can have a deeper understanding of the concepts and you can make your decisions. Understanding how remdesivir work does not change if you have an opinion which is towards it or against it. Understanding how ivermectin work or hydroxychloroquine work or um, let's say this commostat work that you can still have your opinion. You can still decide to use it or not. But knowing how it works provides more strength. So I think that is what is important. Uh, Barbara, thank you very much. And uh, uh, if you sometimes come over to my place, you would see that since morning, 12, 11, I start working on various studies, I go over the study, I understand the mechanisms, I highlight them, then I create notes, then I go into the this uh, drawing program and draw all the things that I think I want to talk about. And then I go back. And then after the, the sessions, I spend, I think, three, four hours going over the comments and responding to the comments and responding wherever I can. So this is a service that I can do when our healthcare workers are on the front line, they are facing the patients. They are facing such a um, such a deadly disease at this time, and they are doing it. So this is my help. This is my way of contributing. And similarly, for laypersons, I think understanding the concepts and mechanics allow better thinking. So you have taught me more in the past two months than anyone else. I'm able to educate my patients. Absolutely. And I have um, learned and done that, meaning I was not a expert and expert in coronavirus before. So I had to go and find it and do it. And I'm very proud. I'm very happy about it. So I'm responding to someone saying that, why do people curse me? Doesn't matter. I actually, I enjoyed the today's burn that when sheep have to sleep, they, they count you. It was beautiful burn. I, I loved it. Um, Thank you very much, Ken. Um, thank you very much. How do I pronounce your name? Oyahan. Is clear? Correct. I'm, I'm not biased. I don't have any. Uh, so my aunt says, research and my, my aunt, very good. Thank you very much, John. And this is what I, this, this is what is the benefit of this all. And Ken, I will not be discouraged by the negativity. Believe me, I usually, um, when there is something too much negative and it's counterproductive for other audiences, well, I remove it. 
but uh, for example i left this one because it was a cute little message <laughs> but i'll continue so um, so tell me do you have any questions general questions life questions uh, corona virus questions so andrew says your humility is inspiring and lends validity to the information which you present to the peer reviewed site i believe the same regarding politicization of science by focusing on mechanism i find you are deepening my understanding of methodology which is a very context of results and discussion absolutely and that is the benefit that once you understand the mechanism then it is your choice to decide that do you like it or you don't like it or you want to believe in it or you don't want to believe in it you want to use it or you don't want to use it the choice is still yours i'm not changing your choices but i'm offering some more knowledge that can help thank you very much sadik um doctor you were talking about the drug use in japan i did not hear it the name is camos camostat mesylate camostat mesylate it is a drug that they have been using since 1985 for acute pancreatitis and then then i believe since 1995 for post operative esophagitis and this drug blocks tmpr ss2 tmpr ss2 is necessary for sars cov2 because it cuts the the spike if this is the spike the tmpr ss2 cuts that spike into two pieces one piece then connects with the as2 the other piece connects with the membrane and allows the virus to go in the cell so if you block tmpr ss2 then it cannot cut the spike protein and virus cannot enter our, our cells so that's a beautiful mechanism and drug is safe so i hope that uh, riyad riyad that answers your question absolutely and and the benefit i i i find this to be beneficial that all of us together are becoming more knowledgeable and more aware we we know how to protect ourselves now we know how the management can happen we understand how to keep our immune system balanced and going and we know how if for example today somebody in my friends they are uh, they are in coney island and their cousin is in hospital on ventilator right now and they asked me they put me on the authorization to talk with the doctor so i talked with the doctor and i was able to understand what's happening and then i was able to talk with the family members to say this is what they are doing and i felt that my audience here the viewers here we all we all know those things that i was discussing with the family members and after they listened to me they felt so comfortable they understood what was happening so this is what i think is very useful that when you and i have this discussion and we are all on the same page your knowledge level if it goes up i hope i'm able to offer something that brings knowledge up um then that helps you understand better and think better so um cm is cheap yeah so uh, correct so they this drug camosat camos stat i keep calling it camosat camostat mesylate is very cheap it is very cheap i think the 100 mg is in some cents for some cents so ken said that i have a question for leron limab have you heard about that yes i did i did and i would do a discussion about it any oral manifestation in cases um symptomatic cases have been shedding we know but they have been uh, asymptomatic so ranga bhaskar what do you mean by oral manifestation meaning some oral pathologies um then nsc alone or with glutathione so here's the deal uh lying eyes nsc gives rise to glutathione as well so if you take nsc alone it would help make more glutathione so if you wanted to have glutathione as well fine otherwise nsc itself is sufficient hyperbaric oxygen therapy so this is a good question i haven't done research on that yet i haven't looked at any studies yet so i would look at that then there is this question 
uh, I'll be using movers to look at new concerns. How concerned should I be about the spread of Corona during the process? Uh, if you are taking care of the masks and if they don't have masks, give them the mask to wear as well. Ask them to wear gloves. You wear gloves as well. No, no issues. You should be fine if the preventative measures are there. Take your vitamin C, vitamin D, take quercetin, take uh, zinc, and you should be okay. Just, just meaning have the preventative measures. Andrew says, with regards to SARS-CoV-2, could comment on any studies of which you are aware investigating susceptibility. One is immunosuppressed, say for methotrexate but with vitamin D3 supplementation as opposed to being immunocompromised without pharmaceutical intervention. Um, so I have not seen any study. It's a very good question, Andrew. I will look into it. It's a good question. So Kawasaki-like illness in children. Yes, yeah, so we talked about it. There is a video on YouTube that says uh, COVID-19 insights Kawasaki disease in children. So please look at that. And I have talked about it uh, in detail. Um, signs to look for. So there are no signs. If somebody has COVID-19 and they are asymptomatic, there are no signs. Maybe at most they may have runny nose. But remember, we are saying asymptomatic. So they have nothing. So there are no signs in the mouth. Can we have pleural effusion in COVID-19 patients? So the question of pleural effusion, look, pleural effusion is an important outcome of severity of pneumonia. When pneumonia increases and becomes severe, it can infect on the sides of the chest. And when the sides of the chests are infected, that can spill into the pleural area as well. And that can cause pleural effusion. However, here, more than the pleural effusion, ARDS, acute respiratory distress sy syndrome is more important. So I haven't heard of pleural effusion, but I would suspect that with any pneumonia, if there is such a, an intense inflammation, pleural effusion can occur. So that was the Atush question. Then there is a question from Sunil. Have you heard about Vithanone Inhibit novel? with a known inhibit? No, I have not. I think I should not delete this video because there are so many comments here that I should research on. Uh, sir, what do you teach? Which classes? <laughs> I just teach this. I actually run drbean.com, which is a an online medical education platform. However, for a couple of months, I have left everything and I just do these discussions so that people can be more aware and knowledgeable when they are managing themselves and their loved ones and navigating the COVID-19 pandemic. So in my own dreams, I am kind of equipping you, uh, offering you tools to help you more confidently navigate this time and be less worried. And when you hear something new, when you hear about a drug, you realize, you understand how that would work or may not work and what can be the side effects. Thank you, you're most welcome. Um, the transmission of the virus from person to person, the reason for the change of corona mutations? No, so person to person uh, transmission was al always there. Droplet transmission was al uh, always there. I believe aerosol transmission was there too, which somehow CDC doesn't put that on their side. They should. And then the fomite, if I have runny nose and I touch that and I put that in a place, that is a fomite and that can transmit as well. It just seems like CDC changed their stance to say that is not the bigger way of doing it. It's the human interaction. So uh, Fatima, Mr. Bean, ACE, I can help. So ACE inhibitor, we have that discussion many times in the past. ACE inhibitors block the formation of angiotensin 2. Now we need angiotensin 2 as well. So we cannot just start giving people ACE inhibitors, but giving ACE inhibitors can help upregulate or downregulate, depending upon the, uh, uh, the need of the person, the ACE2 receptors. So ACE inhibitor can reduce angiotensin 2, which in COVID patients can be a good thing. But 
reducing angiotensin 2 in a patient who needs to have an elevated blood pressure for some reason in their body, not elevated, but normal, and they need S2, that should not happen. So for hypertensive people, ACE inhibitors are fine. ACE receptor blockers are fine as well. And I've done this discussion. The medical community is still not able to reach a final conclusion that are they good or they bad? So the uh, conclusion so far has been, or the message so far has been, continue using these drugs. I think that the upregulation of ACE2 can be useful to make angiotensin 1 to 7, which counter the inflammatory response of the virus. It is bad because there are more ACE2, which allow more virus connection and more replication. But then we also temper or blunt the inflammatory response of the virus as well. So hopefully that answers that question. Um, glutathione cannot be eaten, but can be nebulized. Yeah, so if you take uh, NAC, then the glu glutathione will be formed. Uh, highly active antiviral retroviral therapy could be a good approach or it is so aggressive. No, it can be a good approach. Depends what so and give these targets in coronavirus from this therapy that can work. And as we go through the set of uh, um, the therapies that I had discussed, we will look at all of these things. So, um, uh, so Nebu says, I'm well for liposomal glutathione. Absolutely. So, if there is a liposomal glutathione, if there is a lipid particle with the glutathione that allows the glutathione to go into the cell, that is useful. Uh, what about the COVID-19 causes the host cell after its entry? So what the COVID-19 causes the host cell after the, its entry to the cell? So uh, Jamil, once it enters the cell, it goes in and takes over the cell's machinery and, and causes um, replicates in there. And then when it replicates, then it comes out of that cell, goes to the other cell and replicates in there. That is one function. In that process, inflammation happens. Our body responds, our immune system responds and says, I don't like what, what is happening here. And all the immune cells come over, macrophages and neutrophils and T cells and, and B cells. And the inflammatory response causes damage to the virus and to us. That is how we get sick. So, sir, I saw your videos on Corona, but I want to know about why scientists take lots of time to make antibodies. Here is something which makes. Look, so it's a very simple thing. Imagine we make an antibody today. Let's say that antibody is against coronavirus spike protein. Problem is this. If I get the coronavirus in my body, I have millions of cells that are attacking various parts of the coronavirus. We have to figure out a cell that attacks the spike protein of the coronavirus. Then we have to culture that cell to say make antibodies. Then we have to take those antibodies RNA and you know uh, PCR and make more RNA. Then we have to give those RNAs to bacteria to say make more of the antibodies. Now the question is: Is antibody going to be safe or not? Is it going to attack our, our, our body tissue? For example, in rheumatic fever, what happens is our body makes antibodies against the streptococcus, but it attacks our heart as well. And so we get a, a reaction in which our own body gets damaged. Rheumatoid arthritis, what happens is autoantibodies are now attacking our own tissues. So when you give antibodies from outside, you, are, you have to be careful that it does not attack our tissue. This is why it takes longer time to test these uh, drugs. So hopefully that answers your questions. A question, uh, uh, sir, I saw your all video. So that was Deepak's question. Ray Ray says, hi, sir. Uh, hi, back to you, Ray. Um, then there is Oyahan. Dr. Bean, we are conducting COVID-19 testing in a specific work site. Many of them are positive but asymptomatic week after week. The number of positive cases is growing and still asymptomatic. I'm wondering whether or not low viral load exposure is causing this. This is a very interesting question. This is this needs to be studied. You are saying that you have, look, let me, let me back up for a second. The COVID-19, if I can share my screen, tell me if, uh, 
this will not cause any issues with the audio. So look, then it is mild, moderate, severe, and critical, correct? These are the situations. Now we know about mild, moderate, severe, and critical. What we do not know is how many people are asymptomatic. So it is thought, and there are so many theories and there are so many ways. If you test the whole society, then you would know exactly how many people are asymptomatic. That is the possibility towards herd immunity as well. But it has been said that if you have 100 people sick in any of these stages, then there may be about 10 to 20 times more that were asymptomatic. So that means if 100 are sick, it may be that there are 1,000 that were asymptomatic or 2,000 that were asymptomatic. So, for example, um, in uh, New York, when they are doing the testing, they have tested, let's say, 1.5 million, and they found 343 that were positive. Out of them, not all went to the hospitals. So there are asymptomatic patients out there, and their number should be more. The question, uh, Oyan, to your question, the question that comes to my mind is, are they more than, let's say, 10 times of the sick people? If they're more than that, then we have a interesting case to study. What about steroids in symptomatic patients? So Rehan, uh, from WHO's point of view, steroids are not, they are counterproductive. Although steroids near the end of the disease, when the patient has lingering symptoms, giving steroids help to clear it out. So, so many doctors have said, I don't have a study for that. Doctors have, my friends have told me that. But there is a study that showed that when we use steroids, then the coronavirus uh, clearing of from our respiratory system, that clearance reduces. It lives longer because we have taken down the inflammatory system, which was clearing it. So because of that study, normally steroids are contraindicated. But again, when a patient is in ICU or in a critical state, at that time, doctor is going to look at their labs. And based on the lab, they are going to decide that should we use steroid or not. So I would not say that steroids are absolutely contraindicated. I would say it is case to case, but, <coughs> but generally they're not used because they delay the virus clearance. So hopefully that answers that question. Abdul says, sir, any possibility of trigeminal neuralgia as a complication? So I haven't heard of that. So there is, of course, uh, nasal olfactory nerve swelling, which causes anosmia. But I haven't heard of trigeminal neuralgia so far. Um, then there is, what is the main difficulty for developing vaccine? So we talked about it a couple of times in our previous uh, videos. Vaccine developing is not a problem. There are many ways, weakened virus, uh, part of a virus, spike protein of the virus, messenger RNA, the new technique. There are so many ways to make vaccine. It is the safety of the vaccine. Will the vaccine cause an immune system to respond in a way that it would hurt other parts of our body? Is that vaccine safe or not? That is where the time goes. What is the dose of the vaccine? What is the safety of the vaccine? And then can we manufacture it in large quantities or not? So uh, Ambal says, please keep the video. I'll keep the video. The initial part is going to look really horrible. Maybe I'll, I'll cut the initial part and just leave these question answers. Uh, so Jan says, what about blood types? So I have done a discussion, Jan, about the blood types. Uh, apparently, a blood type are more at risk of severe disease and O blood type are less at risk of severe disease. And I had done a complete discussion uh, maybe two, three, four days ago where I had discussed that why the anti-A antibody helps reduce the hypercoagulability by clearing the von Willebrand factor quickly from the blood. So that is why O uh, blood group people at an, an A are at a lesser advantage of that. So I've done a complete discussion, uh, talk about it. Uh, so Rehan says female are less infected than males. Um, in New York, female and male ratio is the same. Male death rate is higher than the females, 
but catching the infection rate is the same. Um, in other societies, it may be, it also depends on the societies, who is going out to work. For example, in some Muslim societies, women usually stay at home, men go out. So then they are more exposed, the men compared to women. Then in Western societies where, for example, I'm here in California, we all go out to work. And so the exposure is the same for everyone. However, women are a little more um, uh, fortunate that the death rate is less in women, which is excellent. Um, same for children as well. OK, so what other question? So Chantal says, here in Australia, they are now talking about skin changes, which could be linked to COVID-19 or more so around the toes and hands. So is that the same thing as COVID toes, that we have the hypercoagulability, which makes thrombi and th thrombi then emboli, and these emboli get stuck in the smaller parts of our blood vessels, which are in the toes and uh, fingertips. And so over there, there is, uh, of course, skin damage and tissue damage and bleeding and ischemia and necrosis. Um, Jim says, Take quercetin with zinc on an empty stomach at least 20 minutes. Okay, so there is some prescription going on. Very good. Are you charging fees, Jim? Um, you're most welcome. Then Nabu says, can we discuss about cancer and COVID? I have already done that discussion. It's about two weeks ago. So please look at the YouTube. I have done that discussion in detail. Uh, sir, how difficult it is for international America to match in California? <laughs> so we'll talk that as a separately if you have good scores if you are a good doctor they would take you um how i found you and dr dr mubin.com barbara thank you very much um thanks thank you for telling us thank you people are too agitated share your video in a recovery group suddenly all political people attacked me and blocked me <laughs> sorry about that my aunt although i have nothing political i do not <laughs> They, they attack me all the time as well. But I have, I don't know why. So what is, I think this is what's happening. I talk about hydroxychloroquine in a positive way. But my video about hydroxychloroquine has a disclaimer in the beginning to say, don't self-medicate, it can cause death. So people are confused that am I pro-hydroxychloroquine or not? And based on that, they try to figure out am I pro or not? And I find that to be, not right. My knowledge for hydroxychloroquine should be a doctor's knowledge and my prescription should be a doctor's prescription, not that one person said it or the other person said it. So this war is weird that we are talking, we are having a war over medicine. Who, who does that? But that is how people become upset. So when I talk about remdesivir, for example, although YouTube took it down, but when I talk, talked about it, many of the comments said, you are promoting remdesivir, which is more expensive. Pharma shill. Only one. YouTube. Against COVID-19. I have presented mechanisms. Four mechanisms. One. Acidic, these fusions we talked about, is it blocks the viral entry. Second, the hydroxychloroquine can act as a zinc ionophore and allows the zinc to come into the cell, which would allow the zinc to work as an antiviral as well. So that is second. Third, hydroxychloroquine changes the pH within the cell as well, upward toward basic um, environment, which causes the enzymes not to work correctly, which causes the cell replication. The RNA-dependent RNA polymerase of the coronavirus doesn't work correctly. And our Golgi operators and the other endoso and other uh, vacuoles, they have or the ACE2 that receptor needs like this find with the sars cov 2 2 
think that every single time you were uh, you were known to be associated with me and got blocked my apologies for that but it is my daily uh, routine now lying guy says you're very gracious you answer more questions than my own doctor i am very happy to do it i work for you guys uh, since the day uh, morning till the evening and i've been doing it for two months so uh, today that bad voice and the network gave us an opportunity to just open up the forum so i'm very happy you're very welcome um co sitting can can be yes yeah, so uh, the nicolas anything that has red skin can have a red pigment can have quercetin in it um i had wondered if there are if there might be some chemicals to mimic uh, an ace receptor to bind with the virus so ace receptor there are many studies going on right now embol where they are trying to create ace receptor and float that in the blood and allow the virus to attack that and just become destroyed or meaning useless what would it do with the free floating ace receptor so there are there are drugs that are being formed studies need to be done that but that is so in greece his name is dr aras he had coined that idea about month month and a half ago so it's a great idea embol um how many minutes of sun exposure does a person of indian heritage need a day to produce maximal amounts of vitamin d so okay a uh, tricky question here is the deal one of course when you say indian heritage that means that the skin can be a little brown so that would reduce the sun's effect for a person when the sun is slightly at an angle that the ultraviolet rays are available full body 10 to 20 minutes is sufficient to make that day's vitamin d i would suspect that for us who are brown skinned it may need to be more so instead of 10 to 20 minutes it may be 30 minutes but what you have to make sure is that you do not burn your skin so please make sure that you do not end up burning. so that too asian culture uh, there are people who do not uh, take off their clothes to a larger extent so it's not about just the hands and the face the whole body front back arms legs their exposure for 10 to 20 minutes is what is necessary for vitamin d conversion and if that is not possible then take supplements so that was for jaspal then jonathan says i have experienced colloidal silver benefits with bacterial infections any knowledge if it helps i have not seen that yet jonathan something also to uh, research i think i should leave this uh, video up because the comments in there have lots of questions so deepak says is corona virus evolving i would say mutating yes uh, it is mutating at a low rate number 1 number 2 it is mutating a lot as well that is true but many mutations are useless or the mutations are it is trying to live in us so i have done that discussion it's it is trying to love us and say i want to live in you and so for that it is adapting to us remember it's an animal virus that is trying to live in human people so it is trying to learn how to live in us good news is that the spike protein which is the target of the drugs and vaccines is not changing its spike is very similar to sars cov and mers so because spike is not changing when we'll make vaccines and drugs this virus can be ca caught but it is mutating so yes uh nicolas says it is very involved work there are no true and antivirals so some other discussion going on uh santosh any says picture of pneumonia absent in covid most of the time yes i would not make it absolute because it depends upon really the extent of the pneumonia and the ards can cause this covid-19 can cause severe pneumonia okay so my aunt says that why is issue um, based on that body isolated from 
SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID from entering cells in laboratory. So, uh, Al-Haji is this. There are so many discussed experiments where in vitro, that is in the lab, things are done. Question it them in vivo without hurting the person. That is where the challenge is. Vitro, <coughs> vivo. Although it is funny that in Bangladesh they have used ivermectin with, according to the doctor who have done it, with hundred percent success. So I have to, I had to pre present that as well. I'll do that. Plasma treatment from recovered plasma is awesome. 